I don't know him. Does she seem cool? I don't know her. Right. Like, what am I supposed to say? Like, I'm not gonna put on a thing like, oh, we're all Hollywood, and let's just. I think the problem with Jenny from the Block is that they cut my laugh and they kept ad libs and turned her vocals like all the way down. I wrote a song for her and I also referenced I'm Real for her and they left my background vocals on. Ever wondered about the real stories behind the glitz and glam of the music industry? What if we told you that one of the most iconic pop stars, Jennifer Lopez, might have a dark side that's been lurking in the shadows? Yeah, I was actually thinking about one of my favorite scams of all time. It will literally be Ashanti or Christina Milian or like another girl who sounds like her. Like it's other people. What and is she collecting the royals? Yep, we're talking about allegations that JLO has been involved in some pretty shady stuff, especially when it comes to black female artists. Once someone goes after you and attacks you and um, intentionally tries to consistently hurt you, at some point, you have to protect yourself. You know what I'm saying? But have you heard Mariah Carey subtly throwing shade at JLO? Ever thought about why? Could it be that Mariah was trying to warn us all along? Jurors also wanted to hear a readback of testimony relating to Combs' former girlfriend, actress singer Jennifer Lopez, who was in the Navigator when it was stopped by police. First off, what's the deal with J.Lo allegedly stealing songs and styles from black artists? Remember the whole Ashanti incident? You wrote the song for yourself or you wrote it for J.Lo? And, and no, I wrote it for J.Lo. Got okay. it. I wrote it for J.Lo. Why did Ashanti's vocals end up on J.Lo's tracks without proper credit? Coincidence or something more sinister? They played me to beat. I think it was seven. They chefed up the Craig Mack. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And then, um, he was just like, yo, just write something. Write something that goes along with, you know, what's going on with her. Then there's the saga of Christina Melian. Why did her career suddenly stall after JLO released hits that sounded eerily similar to Melian's work? I recorded the original demo. A month later, Tommy Mottola gets it for Jennifer. And next thing I know, she's going to New York. She's in New York. She's recording the song. Was it just bad luck or is there a pattern here? How many more artists have had their careers stunted or even ruined because of JLO's rise to fame? And yes, I sing backgrounds in it. It's no different than Michael Jackson having background singers on songs or Britney Spears. Like this is what music is made of. And let's not forget about the whispers around Brandy. How come her music took a back seat just as JLO was skyrocketing to fame with a sound that seemed to echo Brandy's vibe? I don't know her. I don't know her. I don't know her. <laughs> But the picture proves that she knows me. <laughs> Did JLO's rise come at the expense of these talented black artists? Speaking of vibes, what about the accusations of cultural appropriation? How often have we seen JLO adopt styles and elements from black culture only to gain massive success while the original creators remain in the shadows? In the new Jennifer Lopez documentary, Halftime, the singer-actress talks about how she has faced racism in the past and how the NFL nearly derailed her halftime show the night before it was supposed to happen. Is this just part of the game or is there a deeper issue at play? Let's talk about the behind the scenes power moves. How much influence does JLO really have in the industry? And you said JLO mom didn't like Puffita, right? She just, his mom couldn't stand. His mom never took a present, a gift. Could she be using her power to overshadow black artists intentionally? Are there contracts, deals, or industry politics that we don't know about? He was larger than life. But at first, I, I didn't like him at all. You know, I didn't. I thought he was like. You know. And what about the narratives we hear? Why do stories about JLO's alleged misconduct often get buried or dismissed? Is there a deliberate effort to keep these allegations under wraps to protect her image? Have you been seeing the Jennifer Lopez hate after her new movie, new tour, and everything else lately? Nah, JLo. So JLo be getting in trouble, goddamn. We've all seen JLo's success, but at what cost? Are these stories just part of the cutthroat nature of the industry? Or is there a deeper, more troubling truth? Could Mariah Carey have been onto something all along? So the next time you groove to a JLO hit, ask yourself, what's the real story behind the music and who might be paying the price for her fame? Mariah Carey's long feud with JLo is heating up again after new evidence popped up proving Mariah was right all along. Turns out, JLo's been a snake, ripping off other artists, especially black female artists. Now everyone's turning on Jennifer Lopez and she's freaking out. She's throwing all her money at trying to save her reputation. But after years, 
years of scamming fans and stealing from other artists, people are finally seeing through her. Looks like she won't be able to buy her way out of this mess this time. Jennifer Lopez's reputation is tanking, and there's a good reason for it. Everything she's done in her career up to this point is catching up with her, and people just don't seem to like her. Sure, she's famous for her music and movies, but J-Lo actually got her start in Hollywood as a dancer on the sketch comedy show In Living Color. She did that for two seasons, and it seems like that was her entry into the entertainment industry. That's right, you know, you know. You can't deny that J-Lo is a great dancer. But before she was releasing her own music, Jennifer Lopez played the role of Latina superstar Selena in the classic biopic. This musical lead became Jennifer's breakout role, and she even earned a Golden Globe nomination for it. So, really this was Jennifer stepping into the music scene. Two years after the biopic was released, she dropped her own album. Now Jennifer's album, On the Six Inches, probably wouldn't have done as well if it wasn't for her role as Selena. She really went for that role because she knew how important it would be with both the Hispanic and American audiences. It made her super mainstream and showcased her singing talents. Reports say the singer rose to fame after her role as Selena in the self-titled biopic. Though her singing career has brought her a lot of fame and success, J.Lo has been known to frequently rip off off other artists. Jennifer has had a bad habit of borrowing vocals from other artists and passing them off as her own. While it's not uncommon in the music industry for artists to use backup singers, it's a bit less common for a big artist to completely steal another artist's vocals because people can usually tell the difference. But Jennifer Lopez didn't seem to care. Take her song I'm Real, for example. It's one of the classic cases where she completely ripped off someone else. I'm Real was Jennifer's attempt to appeal more to an urban audience and boost her album's chart performance. The song was released as a single, but most of it was written by Ashanti, who would go on to become the R&B princess of the early 2000s. Now, Jennifer Lopez didn't just stumble across this song and steal it from Ashanti. Even though it might seem that way, she didn't have that much power. What actually happened was that Mariah Carey and her ex, Tommy Mottola, who was a big record executive, were feuding. Tommy found out that Mariah was making a song with Jay Rule, so he asked the producers to create the same sound for Jay Lo. Essentially, Tommy wanted Mariah Carey's career to flop and use Jennifer Lopez as a catalyst. So my time we told. Hey, got and, I, it. and he calls me because he found out me and Rule made a record with Mariah Carey. Mm. And at the time, he hated Mariah Carey. The song was originally written and sung by Mar Inc. It was recorded and performed by Ashanti, so it was completely her song. But Jennifer Lopez was ordered to recreate it because Tommy felt like J. Lo was more of a competitor for Mariah and could help take her out. So But don't worry guys, Jennifer Lopez wasn't able to take out Mariah. We know how that story goes. However, Ashanti's vocals were used all over the track, and that's really the issue people have with this breakout song. Jennifer Lopez also faced controversy for a line in the song where she used the N-word, which outraged fans and led to protests at one of her NYC concerts with banners. Because Ashanti's sound and lyrics were such a hit for J.Lo, Ashanti went on to write and sing another song for her titled Ain't It Funny, which was another big hit for J.Lo, even though it wasn't necessarily her work. Here's a clip of Ashanti's voice so you can hear how similar it sounds to what Jennifer Lopez puts out. A lot of fans picked up on this later on or in hindsight, realizing that JLo's persona seemed pretty manufactured and gave off a vibe of being like an industry plant. Ashanti even explained her frustration with having to write, produce, and perform vocals for music that ended up being used by JLo instead of herself. While Ashanti was initially excited for J-Lo. It's clear she has some lingering resentment about the whole situation. I also referenced I'm Real for her and they left my background vocals on the record. And people, they say, you know, are you the ghost voice for <laughs> you heard that? Yes, I heard that. <laughs> we almost want to ask Ashanti to spill the tea on how she was basically the backbone of JLo's career, but it wouldn't be fair to attribute Jennifer Lopez's entire music career to just a couple of Ashanti songs. JLo is also known for her hit Jenny from the Block, a nickname she still has today. Remember the scene in her documentary where she's that 16 year old from the Bronx with messy hair? This song was another attempt for Jennifer Lopez to boost her street cred and make herself appear more urban. Interesting. 
Interestingly, the voice for this single originally belonged to Natasha Ramos, who demoed the track for J-Lo. Natasha's voice has a striking resemblance to Jennifer Lopez's, so it seems like J-Lo didn't have to put in much effort because Natasha had already sung the song. Despite this, Jenny from The Block played a significant role in making J-Lo a big name. Fans were upset to learn that it wasn't J-Lo's original work because the demo was released, and people could hear that the chorus and bridge didn't sound like Jennifer Lopez had altered them at all. She essentially just used what Natasha had produced. Natasha was quoted saying, I think the problem with Jenny from The Block is that they kept my laugh, they kept my ad-libs, and they turned her vocals all the way down. The from the Bronx part is me. We've actually heard from Natasha, and she's spoken out about how she feels on this. Let's dive into what she has to say about the situation. I think the problem with Jenny from The Block is that they cut my laugh and um, they kept ad-libs and they turned her vocals like all the way down. You might be thinking there's a witch hunt against Jennifer Lopez or wondering if Natasha is just making it up. But when you hear Natasha sing, it's clear there's a lot of similarity between her voice and what you hear from J-Lo. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. Used to have a little, now I have a lot. No matter where I go, I know where I came from. A lot of people are comparing the situation to Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli was a pop duo that got exposed for lip syncing their vocals instead of actually singing their hit songs. It feels similar because just like Millie Vanilli, Jennifer Lopez has been exposed for not using her own vocals at all. One person wrote, Could it be that J-Lo is so mean to everyone because deep down she feels guilty for having no talent and is actually projecting her insecurities on other people? Another person added, J-Lo is the biggest example of how pretty privilege makes your life easier. No one contradicted her because she was hot. Now that she is losing her looks, PPL are finally speaking up and seeing the truth. Natasha was struggling to pay her bills and working as a waitress, while Jennifer Lopez was getting all the credit for her work. Not just her vocals, but also her laugh and ad-libs were used by J-Lo. Natasha's unique character and contributions were a big part of the song, and it feels like J-Lo just took all that away. Poor Natasha. It's tough to see her work exploited like that. She's a prime example of someone who's been taken advantage of. Another song by Jennifer Lopez, Ryan Die, was written and produced by Brandy and was originally intended for her. However, Jennifer Lopez wanted it for her Rebirth album and managed to get it. Allegedly, J-Lo couldn't find the time to record vocals for the entire song, so Brandy's voice is still very much present on it. Hashtag was she knows me. Mm -hmm. Now everybody knows that Mariah always says who she does not know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It seems like J-Lo has a pattern of using this excuse for several songs. For example, I'm Real was released twice in different versions. The track was a typical pop song and is rumored to be a dig at rival Mariah Carey. The sampled version used Firecracker by Yellow Magic Orchestra, which hadn't been sampled before 2001. Mariah Carey had attempted to license it for her song Lover Boy, but Tommy Motola, Mariah's former husband, beat her to it with malicious intent. Once again, J-Lo couldn't find the time to lay down her own vocals for the chorus. Instead, the voice you hear is actually Shelleen Thomas's. This incident most definitely prompted Mariah Carey's famous I don't know her line. Und was ist mit J-Lo? Die kenne ich nicht. Oops. Honestly, maybe Mariah Carey doesn't know her because nobody really knows her in the truest sense. If she's not singing her own music and can't find the time to maintain a career she's profiting so much from, it all feels pretty inauthentic. That's why people are starting to question her now. Mariah, who calls herself Supergirl, says she often sleeps just three hours a night. When told Lopez claimed to get eight, Mariah said, quote, if I had the luxury of not actually having to sing. Honestly, you've got to admit, we love seeing Mariah tell it like it is. Sure, Mariah might not use her live vocals all the time these days, but she can actually sing and hit those notes. Another single by Jennifer Lopez, Play, wasn't created or sung by her either. It was actually created by Christina Million. Christina Million wrote and sang the song Play. You can hear her voice all over the track, especially in the chorus, where J-Lo barely sings a note. Christina Million does get credit for the background vocals on play, but she's really the main singer on the track. It's another example of Jennifer Lopez taking someone else's song and making it her own, with the record label supporting this narrative. Many of these artists probably feel betrayed seeing their own work and voices being used for someone who doesn't deserve it. One person wrote, All of this makes you wonder if J-Lo can really sing, because it sounds like all she has done is sing over other artists. Another person added, J-Lo will take what she wants without a thought. She hasn't any 
respect but wants respect for herself. Low, low, low. Fans are smart and can see through the inauthenticity of JLo's career. They recognize that she's been using other people's work to make a buck and has been labeled as running a long-standing scam in the music industry. It's also interesting to consider if JLo's career has always had priority because Tommy Motola is so determined to keep Mariah Carey's competitors in the spotlight. There are other songs by Jennifer Lopez that have been accused of having ghost singers, not just her biggest hits. If You Had My Love is definitely one of Jennifer Lopez's standout tracks and is often considered her signature song. It was released in 1999 as her debut single, and it made a huge splash on the music scene. The song hit the top spot on the Billboard Hot 100 and stayed there for five weeks, which was a pretty impressive feat for a debut. What's interesting is that the chorus of the song is actually sung by Sean Yet Harrell. Her vocals are mixed in as background, so J-Lo's own voice isn't front and center there. Even though Lopez was the face of the song, Harrell's contribution is pretty significant in giving the track its distinctive sound. The whole vibe of the song helped establish J-Lo as a major player in the music industry and set the stage for her future hits. Kind of fill up that void. Here we go, straight away. And playback. All I Have was the second single from J-Lo's album This Is Me, then and turned out to be a huge hit, even overshadowing her earlier track Jenny from the Block. The song shot to the top of the charts, but if you listen closely, you'll notice that J-Lo's voice isn't the main feature on this one. The chorus of All I Have actually uses a vocal sample from Deborah Law's 1981 single Very Special, which only reached hash 31 on the charts back then. While Sony did get the green light to use the sample, Deborah Laws herself wasn't informed and ended up taking legal action. Her case was dismissed twice though, so she didn't get much traction on that front. Baby, don't go. Baby, don't go. The voice you hear in the chorus of All I Have belongs to Makaba Riddick. Riddick, who was signed to Rock Nation at the time, has written hits for big names like Rihanna and Beyonce. So between the sample and Riddick's contribution, J-Lo's own vocals are pretty much a backdrop in her own song. Get Right is definitely one of those tracks that gets fans moving and grooving with its irresistible beat and catchy chorus. The song was produced by Rich Harrison, who co-wrote it with Usher. Interestingly, Get Right was originally intended for Usher's 2004 album Confessions under the title Ride. When the track didn't make the cut for Usher's album, Harrison decided to pass it along to J. Lo. This was partly as a way to make up for giving a track called One Thing to Amory instead of Lopez. The drama didn't end there, though. Usher wasn't thrilled about the song being handed off and reportedly demanded publishing rights. Even though Usher wasn't the one behind the mic on Get Right, it's a track that definitely deserves a shout out for its bouncy vibe and that unforgettable hook. It's one of those bops that you just can't help but dance to. Love Don't Cost a Thing is definitely one of J-Lo's standout singles and played a big role in cementing her image as a major pop icon. The track is often rumored to be about her ex, Diddy, and the extravagant gifts he showered her with. Some say this song might have even contributed to their breakup, as it seemed to push back against the materialism in their relationship. After her split with Diddy, Lopez went on to marry Chris Judd, who made a memorable appearance as one of the backup dancers in the music video for Love Don't Cost a Thing. As for the vocals on the track, there's no official background singer credited, which has led to speculation. Some believe that Canela Cox, a talented background vocalist, might be contributing to the track's sound. Regardless of who's lending their voice, the song remains a classic and a testament to Jay Lowe's enduring appeal. As for the background vocals on Love Don't Cost a Thing, there's no official credit listed, leading to speculation about who might be lending their voice to the chorus. Some chatter suggests that Canela Cox is the one behind those vocals. But since she's not credited and possibly not even paid, it's hard to confirm her involvement. Feeling So Good is Jenny's fourth single, and it marked a significant shift in her sound, leaning into R&B more than her previous tracks. The song features a standout collaboration with Fat Joe and Big Pun, adding a distinctive flair to its vibe. 
The music video, which showcases some serious energy and style, was dedicated to Big Pun after his tragic death from a heart attack shortly after the single's release. Despite Jenny's busy schedule, she managed to record vocals for two other artists involved in the track, but couldn't fit in the time to record all of her own vocals. As a result, the chorus was handled by Jennifer Carr, who has a notable background in the music industry. Jennifer Carr has written for a range of artists, including Paris Hilton, ATB, and Paul Van Dyke. She's also known for co-writing If You Had My Love, a hit for Jennifer Lopez. The collaboration on Feeling So Good brought a polished, memorable edge to the song, contributing to its success. I'm Gonna Be Alright initially appeared on Jenny's album before being remixed for J to the L.O., the remixes where it became the album's second single. The original remix version featured 50 Cent, but before it hit the airwaves, Epic Records replaced him with Nas, sparking a feud between the two rappers. 50 Cent later mentioned, the first thing that started feeling a little off with him was the Jennifer Lopez sh hinting at the tension that arose from the change. For a while, I around with a smile, but as for the background vocals on I'm Gonna Be Alright, there's no official credit, which raises questions since the chorus clearly features a different voice than Jenny's. The vocals have a style reminiscent of Michael Jackson, but it's more plausible that Lorraine Cheryl Cook, who is credited as a writer on the track, is actually the one providing those chorus vocals. Loving You holds a special spot as track hash 2 on This Is Me. Then, even though it wasn't released as a single, the song features samples from Mentum's Juicy Fruit and George Benson's Never Give Up on a Good Thing adding a touch of nostalgia to its sound. Like Jenny from the Block, Loving You was crafted by Corey Rooney and Troy Oliver. Natasha Ramos, who often provided demo vocals for Rooney and Oliver, is the voice you hear prominently throughout the chorus of Loving You, just as she was on Jenny from the Block. So this is how Jlo has been accused of stealing careers and voices, and this is how she seemingly made her career. One person wrote, I always say real singers have a hard time with music industries because they cannot be told they have no real talent. And the ones that don't have the talent is made, the labels can control those people. Another one added, the pride and ego she has when her career is literally built off stealing hopping on other people's work is just hilarious to me. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.